Okay, so here we are back at it again, and this is the Golden Teal. I'm calling this kit Summer Breeze. It's late summer, but that's okay. When you see these um, pictures, you'll agree that it's very breezy summer kit here. And then I cooked this and the Forest Mist and the Golden Charcoal together. I cooked three kits together for the very first time to see if I could. And all of these kits had their own grates like I had said in the Charcoal Gray video, but I stacked them in my pan and they were flat enough that I could put the rocks on them and they were still well within like an inch and a half under the top of my roasting pan. So I was able to save safely cook three kits at the same time. Now all these kits of course are from the same color family. Um, <clears throat> I did slight variation with the color so I was able to get away with cooking them together. Like if you're doing a red kit, like if you're doing a warm kit and a cool kit, it's fine if you put them together one after the other, you know what I mean? But you don't wanna cook them together because you're gonna get dye, could be flowing from one kit to the other. So you wanna guard against that. Just stick with, if you're doing a bunch with comparable colors that you don't mind mixing, go for it. That's what I'm trying to say. So I've been testing this uh, Master's Touch mixed media paper, five and a half by eight and a half inch, 110 pound, 60 sheet paper pad here that I got at Hobby Lobby. And I'm very impressed with how it takes the media and how it takes the leaf prints. I have only used <clears throat> Master's Touch and Canson and I am not disappointed in mixed media paper ever. So if you don't have access to those brands where you are and you, but you do have access to mixed media paper, I'm sure you're gonna have beautiful results. Also, of course, I'm sandwiching all of my kits between two sheets of nine by 12 water paper cut in half. So these are six by nine, which makes them a half an inch bigger than the mixed media paper all the way around, of course, to guard against getting great marks inside my kit. So here's one side. This is actually the great side, and I sandwich leaves between the great and the um, paper every time. I didn't do it a few times and I got lousy results, so now I do it every time. So now this is a result of the smaller pages. Um, being in the sandwich together and then these bigger sheets are sticking out in the bath. So they end up getting this really what I think is a very happy treasure happening. I love these graphic borders. I think it came out really cool. There's a little tiny bit over here. There's none over here, but I like the unevenness of it. I think it's just so fun. And of course you don't get it on this side because that's the outside. So it happened again on this. And also on the inside sheet somewhere in here is the mirror image. You have a mirror image for every single page you do, of course, except the outside. So um, I'm sure I, that probably goes without saying, but I guess I really like to be thorough. <laughs> So here's the other side, and the same thing happened. The whole, these pages must have been, you know, right up to the edge. So that's why I got such a big border here and no border here, but really fun. Let's go over our colors really quick. That's not it. So this kit, I went ahead and did the golden yellow and the teal. And of course, like I said before, I mixed up the uh, golden yellow, I do about 40 to 50, half of a bottle of this because it's a lighter color and I really want it to show up. And then I did about 20% of this teal, 15 or 20% of the bottle mixed with hot tap water the rest of the way in my glass for this beautiful little summer breeze kit here. So here's the back side, the great side of this watercolor sheet. 
Okay, and then this one, I put a feather in. I've been putting feathers in a lot lately, especially with these five kits. And then here's that, a grapevine leaf here. Also, the teal and the yellow introduced a lot of green into this kit, which I'm totally okay with. And I knew it was going to happen. Your colors will dance together and mix together on the page. So you can mix them when you make them, plus they will mix together right on the paper as well and still hold their individual color too. It's quite amazing. This is a very pale print here. Had a bunch of maple going on. I'm pretty sure that's maple. Um, and I like to do these little sprigs together. I just like the results. And like I've said in previous kits, the maple can turn really black. And then again, you can get results like this. So you just never know. Here's some grapevine leaves. I usually play music through all this, but I'm really wanting to fill you in on all the details that I've been finding. So now this is a result of the same thing that happened in the golden charcoal kit. When your stuff is thick and your pages are not sandwiched together tight, you're gonna get more of this going on because the dye is pooling between the pages and it's getting like it tightened up here and here so the dye got stuck. So you really want to sandwich your pages as flat as you can. And it happens. I mean, it's just going to happen. All of these things are part of the process. This came out real pretty here. I like the aqua kind of vibe that the teal and it's really funny because look at the color on the bottle it's it looks so matte on the bottle and then you get this kind of magical aqua color on your paper so it, you're just it's just different it's different on paper here's a lot of the golden yellow on this leaf And then there's those little leaf sprigs. Now, on this kind of stuff here, I have been taking this out in Photoshop when I go through them before I put them in my Etsy shop. And as always, this kit is Summer Breeze and it's linked below. So if you want this kit for journals, it's definitely available. But these big black blotches here will not be in them. I used to put them in totally raw. And a lot of my kits are raw just because I didn't want to alter. But now if it's real blatant, like this I'll leave. But if it's real blatant, I just take it out now. So like a lot of this I'll leave because it's throughout the page. So it kind of gives it more balance. But that other one, you know, it's in one spot. It's this Blah, the eye is drawn right to it. Yuck, I don't like that, so I get rid of it. But like this, I don't. You get the idea. This one I'll mess with a tiny bit. I try not to mess with them too much because I want to preserve the natural beauty of the kit. And, you know, sometimes you just get little imperfections part of the beauty I think but big black blotches are not my fave that's for sure so a lot of yellow I could have tied this kit together a little bit tighter because I didn't get as much uh, detail as I could have here's the end of this kit and again I'm getting very different results in color with um, between the papers. So just know that if you start doing this like I do, um, my colors have been coming out quite different uh, due to the different papers and 
I love that. I totally love that. But it almost makes these pages look like they don't quite match up with the rest of the kit. But I still put them in. So what I've been doing with these littler sheets, with the big sheets I do seven papers, which ends up being a 14 page kit. And um, if and, and you'll get a few more pages too if my outer pages come out good, which they've been coming out really beautiful lately because I sandwich so many leaves between the grate and the paper. But I've had kits where the outer pages were just yuck and I haven't always put them in, but it's very clear. Every kit that I have in my shop, it's very clear how many pages you're getting. So um, no worries there. And I do, when these are like this, they absolutely go in. So this is 10 of this and um, one big sheet cut in half. So you end up getting four and 20, so 24 in this kit here, which is a big kit, very affordable too. So I hope you try this and make some of your very own papers. And if you're not into all the legwork of making the paper, you can surely get these kits that I've made and print them up and make beautiful projects with them and gifts. So thanks for stopping by and please click the like button for me and as always, I invite you to subscribe. We'll be doing a ton of fun stuff on here and I will see you next time. Have a great day.